men, I don't think, want women to be involved in the game at all. It's, it's a man's game, and I think men would like to keep it like that. on the floor, you know, you're watching them. And then if he gets up and he's running around, I still watch to make sure he's not kidding anybody, you know, that he doesn't have a little limb. I didn't go to the match because it's hard to get a babysitter. I either watch it on teletext or listen to the radio. I get quite nervous for some reason. I, I don't know whether it's nervous for Ian, nervous for the team, hoping he'll do well, hoping that they'll win. I always leave housework jobs, like something I don't like doing, like, to, to keep me occupied. Very kindly for Bryson, who's moved across from left to right. I know that they're either top or second, um, but apart from that, I really don't know. No, I'm afraid I'm not a fan. Uh, never have been. I've tried. It just really didn't interest me that much at all. Sort of just sit here and wait for Wolf to come in to tell me how they've done and how they haven't done. Where's Daddy Joe? Oh, God, he's gone to work. I can't get all fired up and tense to go over again simply because of the children. Children don't allow your emotions to go with the football game. They need me to be a normal mum every day of the week. Come to mummy. Oh, yeah, look at his face. Every game, I get this rash on the neck. It's just the build-up to the game, and you just want everything to go so well. I used to get dreadful headaches. It's just the tension, really. You do sometimes go through what he's going through, because you know that if they lose, it's a bit... Um, you know, like, for instance, he'll come home and he'll be so depressed, it's really untrue, he'll go through every single point in his sleep about what he's played, and you've got to go through it as well, because you, you get the kicks and the bruises yeah. in the bed. <laughs> and now's an opportunity for Bryce. Suddenly it's a good ball. Now, a good cross here. quite fickle at times, you know, they can really bring a player down. I remember one instance when I was at a game and Paul was injured and he was on the floor and I was saying, get him off, you know, we don't want him on, get him off. And I am sort of worried at what was wrong with Paul. I looked down at John and he was in tears. John! Of course, what I hadn't thought of was that it was his dad, you know, and they're saying all this about his dad, I mean, it does hurt.
have said at the beginning of the season that Sheffield United would be second in the second division, I would never have believed it. I mean, it's just amazing to think that they're this far ahead, you know, at this stage in the season, and everybody is saying that the bubble's going to burst. You know, every, every Saturday when they get the result in, people are saying, oh, it won't last, it won't last. It's difficult if they have lost. You don't know how to approach him. I take it very easy. You know, I, I just let him come out with what he thinks of the game and how he thinks he's played. I never, ever push. And sometimes we can go through all Saturday and we've not really spoke about the game. You know, he'll, he'll bring it up in his own time. But again, I, I've, it's how you get to know Paul. I've, I know how to, how far to go with him, really. And he still puts me in my place if I've gone too far. <laughs> Football will always come first in Wolf's life. It has to come first. It's his living, it's our means of survival. I have to come second with the children. Um, it always has, ever since I've known Wolf. He's a very professional person and he does put his football first, I'm afraid. <laughs> Right, he's got a stone. That's Through the years of knowing him and learning what it's like, it is more than a job. It's it's everything. It's everything. Their whole life really revolves around those games. If you lose, you don't go out at night. There's been situations where he's lost, and on a Sunday, to get out of the way because we don't really want, he doesn't want to really be seen anywhere. We've gone as far as Scarborough for the day out, <laughs> just so we can get away from it. give to women but um, I suppose when they're out and about a lot of people do think football players you know famous on the whole they're all right once they get to know you it's when they come up with the I am a superstar and I'm a football and you can see them in nightclubs and it's not just United it's all the players do it I am a football and they wait for your little pause it's just sort of go wow it's not a glamorous life it's it's quite a hard life. Financially, it's a very good life. There's no glamour involved in it. We don't have a Christmas together. We don't have an Easter together. We don't have a long periods of time together. We'll full work seven days a week. He might have four hours a day off all at once, four, five, six hours. He might have two hours off. Um, you just never know. I can't make plans. You don't know when 
Nicholas going to be home? If he's going to be home? Who, according to the saying, will find <gasps> work for idle hands? I've always yearned for stability. I've always wanted stability. It's, it's something that you really can't have in football, but I've always wanted it. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. How many more seasons do I want to have the worry of knowing what's going to happen to the children at school? My children are now coming to the age where they're at senior school. Do I want Wolf to stay in football? Does Wolf want to stay in football? It's very, very difficult. It's a very difficult choice at the moment. Oh, Joe. No, no, full curly birds. If Ian's away, you've maybe not had a good day with the baby. She's been crying a lot and... You no, know, I would give anything for my mum to be five minutes away, or, or Ian's mum, and just to be able to go up and have a cup of tea and a good, a good natter. I don't see anybody all day, or, you know, I can be in the house for two or three days and never have seen anybody unless I go out to the shops or go out with the dog. Most people stop and talk to you if you've got a dog or a baby. <laughs> Paul and myself, uh, this was when we were engaged, before we got married. We were out, um, I can't remember where we were now, probably out at a pub or something, just having a quiet drink. And there was these two fellas across the other side of the room. And they were quite, you know, dishy, they were all right. And I was just talking to Paul, and you can tell when somebody's staring at you. So like, I'm talking to Paul, trying, and I can feel like these eyes of these, Fellas looking, I thought, oh my goodness, he's really, really getting embarrassing. They're staring all the time. And I'm thinking, you know, you know, I mean, it's quite nice, isn't it, to think that somebody's looking at you and staring as much as they were staring. But then, at the end of the night, they came over to Paul and said, are you Paul Stancliffe? <laughs> Could we have your autograph, please? I mean, I was just deflated. And never, never again now, whenever I go out with Paul, I never, ever think anybody's looking at me. I mean, that's just done nothing for my <laughs> ego at all. Because <laughs> that's it. I want something what I call a soft colour. A soft colour. Mm. But along these lines. Well, I don't mind. Is that the one Before I started work, Football was my whole life. I didn't feel as if I'd got anything else. I was just there for Paul and football. But since I've started work, I mean, there is more. You know, I just love it. You know, there is, I've got a, a, a life of my own. It's really great. I've got other interests now, and it does take you away from football. Um, this one that I am I'm using now is Shimmering Sand. Does this feel all right? Yeah. OK. Great. I was Paul Stancliffe's wife. Now, when I'm at work, he's my husband. <laughs> they say, what does husband do, you know? So you go, oh, he's prof professional football. <laughs> so, oh, who is he? So Paul Stancliffe, oh, no, I don't know him. <laughs> Fine, you know. <laughs> starts on the Thursday, preparing for the match on Saturday. He disagrees with me. However, he likes everything just so. You know, if, if anything makes him go out of his little sequence, then he doesn't like it. We always have spaghetti bolognese Friday night. He always prepares the spaghetti bolognese. He always listens, listens to the same tape. Phil Collins. Oh, Genesis at uh, Wembley concert always listens to that every Friday. We always sit round the table every Friday and then uh, bed very early Friday night. Every Friday night it has to take a sleeping tablet because he cannot sleep. It's only at night when he thinks about it. Saturday is fine up until him getting to the ground, and then, of course, he starts to get nervous. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Right. Yeah, looking nervous. Right. 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 Right.
The chairman um, invited us all up to his office and we all had champagne there. That was lovely, but no, we're not allowed in the executive suite or the directors. I don't know very much about that side, I'm afraid. In this area is the directors, visiting directors, guests, and Sheffield United's guests. The ladies' room is separate, which is just the directors' wives. And the directors are through into the boardroom. They're all kept separate. They all sit together when they go out to watch the match. It's just a half time and full time. They're all segregated, if you like. <laughs> If they did win against Watford, I mean, it's another step towards Wembley and a dream of ours. a lot of facilities for the wives. We just really look after ourselves. I mean, I just happened to marry to Paul. That's as far as it goes. Fine. injured while he's playing football they're very very slow at letting the wives know I mean it's fine if the wife is there but for example if the wife isn't there or if they're playing away you might not get to know until about two or three hours after the incident Finished work at about half past five, walked up to the club, got there about six, and I was stood there till about seven o'clock waiting for Simon to arrive back. And one of the other players' wives arrived. She said that she'd heard on the radio that Simon had been carried off. And she didn't want to say that he'd broken his leg or anything. I was really outside the club from about six o'clock till about half past nine, trying to find out exactly what happened. The messages we got relayed were from players who'd rung the wives who'd rung somebody else to come and tell me. So of course the story's going to get more and more and more from it being his being carried off to being his career's over. I mean you don't know what to say or what to do. Nobody considers you to let you know anything and I think that's very wrong because you can you, all you do is hear it over the radio. You know that they're being stretched off, but you don't know anything else and you can't, you're, you're just helpless.
You're not involved in the club whatsoever. No one ever asks about you. They just don't want to know. As far as I see it, I'm a bit of an outcast. I, I don't really exist as far as the football club's concerned. We've got uh, a players' lounge that unfortunately, when they were building the stadium, they forgot all about the players. So they had to just put this makeshift players' lounge up. And I'm afraid that's where we are, underneath the stand. <laughs> but having said that, I mean, we, we make our own social life and we have a really, really good social life. But I'd say it's all brought on by us. And when we all go out together, I mean, we have a fantastic time. You know, I just wish there was more of that because I know other times when the lads are all together and the players and the wives are all together and they all know one another, I, I think it all helps towards a better club. You'll drop an off at Terrace? Yeah. And then you'll come straight into the Take you then to get to Portsmouth. Uh, it's about five hours down here, right? So you're fairly back? Yeah, about 11 o'clock, Saturday night or something. Yeah. Babe! Bye bye. Right, bye. see you later. I'll phone tonight. Okay. Okay. See you later. Bye. Is Daddy going away? Look. Is Daddy going away in the car? Bye. carry on from school, don't they? You know, just like school, school boys telling them this and telling them that and, you know. You don't ever answer back to no, the teacher? No, no. Well, yes, e Wolf is on the transfer list, but we did know this was going to happen, so it hasn't really come as a big surprise. I think we'll be here till the end of the season. I'm pretty sure we'll be here till the end of the season. And what happens after that, I really don't know. It's just wait and see if anything comes up. Promotion now is such a reality, more so than last time I spoke to you, because there's like only eight games to go now. But yet, so so much can happen. You, you know, it's just all in their hands, and I just wish I knew what was going to come at the end of the month. I mean, the next four weeks, I just, I don't don't know. The pressure's getting to me, quite honestly. <laughs> Oh, 
Hello, Mum. Yeah? Oh, right. Thanks. Oh. And how, how are they playing? Oh, good. Oh, is it? All right, Mum. Bye. Nil nil. They're playing very well, but the wind is very bad and it's spoiling the game. Everybody else has got the results they want, so I mean it's brought it much tighter now. 